What's up, folks? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another fine episode of the Marketing for Coaches show, aka the Michael and Kevin show, Kevin and Michael show, aka Extremely AKA, Loud, AKA, Incredibly Funny, <laughs> aka Recent and Greasy. Oh, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of working titles, but we feel like Marketing for Coaches just, you know, pretty obvious what we're here to talk about. So you know, we're going to stick with that for the time being, although if we come up with anything else very clever or hilarious, which we sometimes do. We'll let you know. Anyway, today um, we want to talk a little bit about, it's actually a, a very common source for inspiration like this. Both of us, we've talked about this before on the show, both Michael and I get to talk to a lot of coaches um, about their reason for doing what they do, how they got their start, the way they run their practices, their principles, their techniques, the stuff that's tried and tested, their processes, um, their strategies, all this kind of stuff. We get to talk about that with coaches all the time. And as you might expect, we get a lot of insights from those conversations. Coaches are very generous in that way. And so are we, or at least we try to be. Um, so today, um, Michael, if you would tee me up with the the analogy of choice. Yeah. So I, today we're talking, we're really talking about, we're talking about juggling, right? We're talking about mm -hmm. having a whole bunch of balls up in the air and, <laughs> and trying to trying to keep everything going and, 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 you know, as we call it, throwing, catching and working on what matters. So kind of talking about, you know, what, what counts when you've got all these balls in the air. It does really feel like you're just when you're, well, when, I was going to say when you're a small business owner, when you are a business owner or anyone in a position of significant responsibility, <laughs> wear of many hats, as many of us, many of us here always are, um, you feel like you're juggling not just 10, 12, 15, 17, 23 things, but that five of those things are chainsaws, three of them are katanas, one of them might be a small child, and then seven of them might just be pies of various types, which now, of course, I'm hungry. Um, anyway, you know the feeling of juggling, and you know the feeling of failing at juggling when things are starting to hit the floor, that sort of chaotic, frantic feeling when you're just a little bit overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And one reason why I really, in, I really, really like the analogy of juggling for as a way to think about your business and as a way to think about how you're spending your time is that the thing that you think would make you a better juggler is probably not the thing that you're thinking of. A lot of times I'll, I'll speak for myself, which is probably the smart thing to do. When I first thought about juggling, I was, I've never really gotten good at juggling. I couldn't, I could, I could maybe do three tennis balls for 30 seconds at best in my days. But when I think about juggling, I usually think about how I'm throwing stuff. I'm throwing a bunch of stuff up in the air. It's all, I'm, it's all about like, I'm, I'm choosing something to throw and I'm throwing it up. Now, obviously, juggling is about keeping these things in the air. And so I'm always thinking about that, the keeping up, the throwing up. It's starting to sound a little gross. But um, the real power, the real skill of juggling is not in the throw, but it's in the catch. And this is like this is extracted from like actual juggling coaches. Like you watch videos online. Anybody who's who knows what they're talking about, even remotely, will mm -hmm. start there. It, it's all about how you catch what you throw up, not about what you're throwing up or how you're throwing it up there. And that really resonated with me in the context of, of business in general. Um, just the way that it keeps you balanced, if you're focused on how you catch things, the way you're focused on your grip, your grasp of what it is you're juggling. Um, there was just so much there in that analogy that really spoke to me about how to avoid that sort of awkward, and you can imagine it in your head too, when someone's about to lose a juggle, when they've been keeping stuff up in the air for a while and something's about to fall, they always lurch. They're always like leaning off screen or they're like stretching out beyond where they can actually properly like keep their balance. And you can usually tell it's like the beginning of the end. It's almost like a wobbling top that's about to fall over. You can you can see it if you're watching someone juggle and they're about to lose it. And just thinking about how focusing on the catch keeps you balanced, allows you to keep a hold on things and will ultimately allow you to keep much more up in the air with grace and with effectiveness, which Obviously, now I'm speaking almost directly about running a successful business. So, you speak on that for a few minutes. I've been—I feel like I've been juggling words for for a little too long here. <laughs> <laughs> you dropped you dropped some words, Kev. <laughs> I did. I did. I dropped a few. <laughs> um, first of all, the fact that you can do three tennis balls for thirty seconds—I'm impressed with. I, I've I've tried juggling. I'm a pretty well coordinated guy. I grew up playing sports. I was pretty. I was a good athlete growing up in college and high school and uh and i could never juggle i don't know why 
just never quite made it happen. Um, but in business, we've all been there um, and we've definitely juggled. Um, and I think it's really just a question of prioritizing, right? Now, I mean, there's, there's the school of thought that if you have more than one priority, you don't have any priorities. Mm -hmm. I get that on kind of a micro scale on more of a macro scale, you know, you can't really, you can't only work on one thing at a time on a mm -hmm. macro scale. I right? take, take quarterly rocks, quarterly goals, right? You've got to have, you've got to be working on multiple stuff at once, not your organization. Um, and, and I think with, you know, with the, the juggling analogy, what it really is a matter of is just figuring out what are the rocks and what are the pebbles. Right. Hmm. And I'm not, hmm. not to mix metaphors here, but no, it's a good one. Though. <laughs> what's, the important, what's the important stuff and, and, and what stuff, you know, can you delegate? Um, what stuff can you defer? It's the th is it there th I think there's three D's defer, delegate and delete. Just get rid of. Right. Yeah. That sounds uh, right to me. <laughs> yeah. um, so thinking about it in, in that sense. Yeah, yeah, thinking about how you how you throw and catch, how you fit things in, how you keep things up and lay things down. It's yeah, there's it's and you're right to acknowledge that it's really a luxury in a sense to to try to think of things of just, you know, you have one single priority. As mm -hmm. as someone who's who started a business or started many businesses, as many coaches are, there's just a reality that has to be faced that you might you, you can probably get there. In fact, that's probably the goal is for you to be really focused on the things that matter most to you, the things that you really want to do. Like a coach will start a coaching business to be a coach, not to run a business. But mm -hmm. to start a coaching business, you do have to start somewhere. And so you have to wear all those hats and keep all those balls in the air and plates spinning and all the analogies that make you feel like you might start to get a little stressed and a little frantic mm -hmm. with the goal eventually of bringing in people to help of getting in systems and processes that allow you to keep more balls in the air, more plates spinning that help you keep your balance. And then ultimately serve in you doing the thing that you love to do. The thing that you started a business to do in the first place that comes up. And I, I know it's, it seems like, you know, very natural that that would come up, but it comes up all the time where you just find yourself engaged in the business of doing the thing you want to do and not the thing you want to do itself. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I like these kinds of analogies, because it really helps you to organize not just your mind and the way that you think about your business, but also in the way that it should feel if you're doing things the way that you need to do them to get to where you want to go, which ultimately that's, that's you know, it's a big part of our jobs too, is to help our clients stay on target, stay on task, stay on the, on, on the path that they want to be on and, you know, help them keep all the things in the air that need to stay in the air and help them catch the things that need to come down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've got, I'll, I'll, I'll speak on one other thing. And, and again, here, I'm going to, I'm going to mix metaphors. Cause I think, I think it's worthwhile at this point, but when you're, when you're looking at all of your plates that are spinning, all of your balls that are up in the air, everything that you're juggling and you're trying to figure out, um, what's what's worth the effort right mm -hmm. what's what's mm -hmm. worth the risk of dropping mm -hmm. a ball um because not everything is um think about your you know your think about your 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 metrics what do you use to measure success and what things we call them feeder metrics right what are the things that feed that north star metric and i use that north star metric because this is where my metaphor mixing is going to come in mm -hmm. i got this uh this marine compass uh in in sri lanka a few years back i don't know if that's looks like it's a little fuzzy but anyways it's a, it's a brass compass it's pretty cool and it just kind of folds in on itself and uh i keep it on my desk um, and it, it, it serves as a, as a quiet reminder of a quiet reminder to focus on my true North, hmm. to focus on the most important thing. Um, and if I'm any time that I've got questions about whether or not I should do something or whether or not I should focus on something or whether or not my team should do something or focus on something. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, any of that. Um, I will catch this guy in the corner of my eye and it'll just kind of <laughs> remind me about like that true North. And then I'll think about, you know, what am I, 
what am I doing? How does this measure up to the direction that we want to go, that I want to go, that, 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 that my, my company wants to go, that my clients want to go, right? And you can put it in, in whatever context it needs to fit in. Um, but thinking about that and then reverse engineering, right? Back from that North Star metric, reverse engineering all the way back to whatever decision it is that you're facing about, you know, this, this plate right here. I'm not sure about that one. Well, does it, does it feed into your true North at all? Right. Mm -hmm. Think about that hard enough, journal about it a little bit. Eventually you're going to come up with a yes or no answer to that. Um, and that can, <laughs> I think, you know, help to inform, um, uh, the, the number of things that you're juggling here. Right. Yeah. It actually reminds me of an episode we recorded a little while ago earlier in the series. Does it make the boat go faster? Right. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> I yeah. love it. Well, that's a, I think, I think that's a good place to leave it. It's a good place. Yeah. A nice little nice. And by the way, that's a very nice compass, quite frankly, Thanks. very beautiful. Um, <laughs> we hope this was a very nice episode for those of you who are watching and listening. And if you're watching, I mean, we're two mid forties gentlemen, so I apologize and you're welcome. <laughs> 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 thank you so much for watching and listening and as always if you have any questions at all or want to have conversations like this maybe go a little bit deeper hit us up in the comments you can find us at boxer.agency you can find both michael and i all over linkedin there'll be links down in the show notes you know what to do it's all the usual stuff like share and subscribe if you're feeling generous you know send us a nice thank you note a handwritten letter it always warms our hearts if you if you're feeling that generous and we will get a chance to talk to you again here very, very soon.